Hey everybody, I've got another fun, easy technique for you today, and it's a great one for fall, but you could use it any time of the year. This one I'm calling full watercolor. I also didn't make this one up, but this is my own creation as far as a card goes. And everyone that has done this at my classes this past month has absolutely loved this technique and loved how easy they th thought it was. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's another look at the card. And you'll notice that I used the maple leaf from the Vintage Leaves stamp set. Try to get that so you're not getting a reflection. And I used the maple leaf. Um, and I love the bright red maples in the fall, so that's why I chose to go with the Cherry Cobbler color. And what I'm using to actually do my stamping on is watercolor paper. The watercolor paper is sold in the Stampin' Up! catalog. It comes, um, the size is six by nine. I cut mine down to three and three quarters by five, and I can get two out of each sheet. There are only five sheets in each pack, so you can actually get 10 cards, or you can just choose to use a smaller image. Um, punch them out, do whatever you want to. But this is what I've chosen to do. And you'll notice I'm using my Stampin' Pierce mat underneath, and I'm also going to cover it because um, you'll get your best image when you use the Stampin' Pierce mat, especially with the photopolymer stamps. But because I am going to actually get rid of some of my ink, I'm inking up my stamp in the Cherry Cobbler, and I'm actually going to stamp it off once on my scratch paper and then I'm going to give it a stamp on my watercolor paper and you see you can see plenty of the image and you can do all of your images at once but I tend to do better if I do one at a time I'm going to take my aqua painter and you might be fussy and want to stay in the lines but because it's watercolor, you don't have to do that. And as you go to parts of the stamp where there is actually more detail, of course it's going to pick up more ink and it's going to be darker. On your aqua painter, you just want to make sure that the water is flowing smoothly, but you notice how nicely it pulls the color throughout the whole stamp with a very minimal effort. Because these come to a really nice point, you can even color that stem without much mess. Now if I were to be changing colors, what's nice about aqua painters is I just would go on my scratch paper till no more color came and I could put it in a new color. I don't have to wait for that one to dry. I might want to try my middle one to actually be a little bit darker this time. So I'm going to go ahead, let's live on the edge, and go full strength right on my watercolor paper. So I did just the opposite as I did in my first card. I did my center leaf darker and my outside leaves lighter. And you notice that I turn my paper some of the time because it's a little bit easier to color by just turning your paper. When you were a kid and coloring with coloring books, you did the same thing. You turned the book just to make it easier to go certain directions. So I'm done with my scratch paper, but I'm going to continue with my image onto the Stampin' Pierce mat and I'm going to add my greeting with memento black ink. You could use the permanent black archival ink as well. 
And I'm using a greeting out of the Rose Wonder stamp set. Also a favorite for greetings because it has so many. And it has inside greetings that can go with the outside. And really, my stamping is done. I'm going to mount that. And it's dry enough. Your watercolor paper will continue to dry onto a piece of cherry cobbler. So again, my watercolor paper was three and three quarters by five. So I've mounted it on one. I just wanted an eighth inch border. So I've mounted it on a piece that is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then that will go on my standard A2 card, which is started out at five and a half by eight and a half and folded in half. You may have noticed on my card these cute little um, water droplets. Those are the perfect white, white accents. I used one of every size and actually these are the adhesive is what makes them white in color and so the tricky part is actually getting the adhesive off the back. It's kind of like a white sticker. I when I had fingernails, it was very easy to use, but I used my paper piercing tool. And then I just use a drop of the fine tip glue pen underneath each one. I'll just get one more done for you, but you get the idea. And if you poke between your fingers, you can get a hold of that adhesive. And, dry, and just dry. It's easiest if you will drop your drop of glue right onto your paper rather than put it on the little accent. And you see how easy those were to remove. And so there you have it. Fast and easy, beautiful fall card, but it can be used any time of year. Leaves, nature are always good. So I'm supposed to be holding it this way. I realize I'm holding it for you upside down.